It's six stories tall, it can withstand nuclear explosions, and it costs over $200,000 to operate every single hour. Transporting the President of the United States around the world is no easy task, as the world's most famous and arguably most important plane, it's essential that Air Force One is expertly fitted with unhackable security, ultimate luxury, and top-of-the-line missile defense systems, and mark our words, it is. Taking into account all of the fascinating high-end military features, it's no wonder the media has dubbed it the Flying White House. Let's take a look inside then, shall we? Seatbelts on! Before we step into the three-level decked-out cabin and check out the exceptional features scattered throughout the aircraft, let's talk about the aircraft itself. What precisely is Air Force One? Think of that typical Air Force One plane. That enormous, blue and white, attention-grabbing superjet. All you need to do is admire the American flag on the tail, or the giant United States of America lettering to understand its individuality. There's truly nothing else like it, right? Wrong. In fact, there's something exactly like it. That's because there isn't just a single Air Force One plane. The White House actually owns two identical units. They're both highly customized Boeing 747-200B series aircrafts, which carry the tail codes 28,000 and 29,000 respectively. While Theodore Roosevelt became the first U.S. president to fly in an aircraft way back in 1910, it wasn't until 1953 with President Eisenhower that the term Air Force One was officially born, but we'll circle back to that unique moniker in a jiffy. In 1962, JFK became the first to fly in a jet specifically built for presidential use, a modified Boeing 707. The plane's designer, Raymond Lowy, chose the renowned baby blue as the main color. Why? Because it was Jackie Kennedy's favorite, and of course, because it matched the colors in the presidential seal. Since then, the illustrious wings have transported everyone from Obama to Nixon, Reagan, Trump, and everyone in between. The current pair of Boeing jumbo jets were inaugurated in 1991, back in the George H.W. Bush era. Fitted with sublime security and comfort features, it should come as no surprise that these planes don't come cheap. Trump reportedly reached an informal deal with Boeing to cap the price for two new Air Force Ones at $3.9 billion. Yes, with a B. Boeing even stated that Trump had, quote, negotiated a good deal. However, according to the Defense Department's first formal report, that cost is considerably higher. The Pentagon will need to shell out $5.2 billion for the updated pair. In general, the two planes sport the same structure as a regular commercial Boeing 747. They're enormous, as long as a city block, and about three times as tall as a giraffe. Each boasts four engines, which provides 56,700 pounds of thrust apiece, catapulting the plane to a top speed of nearly 700 miles per hour, about 10% shy of the speed of sound. Not only can it fly fast, but also far. On a single full tank, which carries 53,611 gallons, these planes can fly halfway around the world. Air Force One also cruises higher than the average airliner, at 45,000 feet instead of 30,000 feet. Contrary to popular assumption, Air Force One doesn't specifically refer to this Boeing or this identical one. In reality, Air Force One isn't technically a plane, it's just a name and a reference point. If the President strapped into an F-22 Raptor, for example, for the duration of his flight, that Raptor jet would be the new Air Force One. Evidently, it doesn't even have to be a transport plane or a luxury Boeing. If he was seated in a B-2 Spirit stealth bomber, then that would be the new Air Force One. Make sense? The name is simply the radio call for any Air Force vehicle holding the President. All crew and all air traffic controllers are made aware of this for the purpose of avoiding confusion with any other planes in the area. This way, the safety of the President's plane is able to be prioritized at all times. If the President rides on an Army aircraft, it's dubbed Army One, while a Navy aircraft is referred to as Marine One. The name system was first used in the Eisenhower days when the plane moving the President confusingly had the same call sign as an Eastern Airlines commercial flight. They were both flying in the same airspace, which immediately prompted the need for a new and improved system. Like a normal Boeing 747, the most common presidential transport planes are fitted with three separate levels. But as you're about to see, the inside of the Air Force One jets don't resemble commercial 747s in any way, shape, or form. As we work from bottom to top, the lowest level typically serves as cargo space, the middle level is the main passenger area, while the upper level is dedicated to the complex communications equipment. 
Cargo space and equipment storage is important, no doubt, but by far the most interesting space is the passenger area. Making most apartments seem small, the plane's onboard living quarters include the president's own bedroom, bathroom, workout room, and office. As if that wasn't enough luxury, most of the furniture is handcrafted by master carpenters suited to the president's particular tastes. The focal point of the middle level is a large conference room which doubles as the president's dining room. Senior staff members have their own dedicated work area, while traveling reporters are assigned their own space too. All up, the mammoth-sized jet can comfortably hold 70 passengers and 26 crew members. Despite the decent understanding we have of the layout, even visiting politicians and high-level journalists are forbidden to access some parts of the plane. This means that besides the general description of what's inside the plane, nobody, except the president and his staff, know precisely how these pieces fit together. What we do know, however, is that the president isn't being dealt a bag of stale, over-salted peanuts for lunch. On board the plane, the crew provide 24-hour, first-class service, which includes a mouth-watering, high-quality menu. Dedicated chefs prepare whatever the president is craving. That could include unique dishes or some good old-fashioned fast food. Don't believe us? See for yourself. Past meals have included everything from KFC chicken to Caesar wraps, steaks, taco salads, and fresh salads. You name it, and a dedicated chef can whip it up. In total, the crew is equipped to feed about 100 people at a time, and the storage area holds as many as 2,000 meals. Unlike the preparation process for regular airline meals, when buying the presidential ingredients, the White House staff need to select markets at random, do groceries undercover, and never source from one location twice, all in order to protect the president from the threat of a deliberate poison attack. If, however, something does go horribly wrong 45,000 feet up in the sky, Air Force One is decked out with all the essential medical equipment. The dedicated medical room has a fold-out operating table in case emergency surgery is needed, plus an extensive pharmacy, a defibrillator, oxygen, and much more. Of course, what good is having all the equipment if nobody knows how to properly use it? That's why a staff doctor is permanently on board who shadows the president wherever he goes. In the event that something does go wrong, the plane is fitted with all kinds of state-of-the-art communication equipment. Obviously though, the main premise of the extensive electronics is to you know, run a country. When you've got over 331 million under your wing, there's no time to enjoy the view above the clouds. The Air Force One planes are fitted with $19,000 televisions to keep up with the events happening on the ground, as well as 85 telephones, a collection of secure two-way radios for backup communication, plus fax machines and ultra-high-speed onboard Wi-Fi. With all of these mechanisms in place, the President can contact just about anyone in the world at the touch of a button. If he's not making the calls himself, then one of the carefully screened military personnel on board will do it for him. Air Force One typically has a crew of 26 who must each operate with a high level of security and professionalism. Every single staff member is selected from the military, must undergo extensive background checks, and need to showcase exemplary service histories. This is no ordinary job, folks, which is why the final Air Force One flight is always an emotional trip when the President must bid goodbye to his loyal crew of four plus years. Another fascinating element of Air Force One, which again sets it apart from traditional aircraft, is that it doesn't have to rely on airport facilities, and no contact with airport staff means far fewer security threats. The planes have their own retractable stairways, their own baggage loaders, and there's not just one entrance, but three, in case any are compromised. While most planes need to stop every few hours to refuel, thanks to its amazing ability to refuel in midair, the presidential plane technically never has to land. This is a crucial tactic in an emergency situation, especially when the threat is land-based. Sure, it's an essential protection measure, but it's also extremely expensive. According to a Freedom of Information Act, Obama's Air Force One costs taxpayers exactly $206,337 for every single airborne hour. That's close to a million bucks for a standard New York to Los Angeles flight. But why such a hefty price tag? First of all, the crew of 26 need to be paid. Then there's the fuel. The four engines burn approximately five gallons of gas per mile, which brings the estimated fuel cost up to a whopping $80,000 per hour. Don't forget the cargo planes, which need to transport the presidential limo. Oh, and the three accompanying helicopters. Not to mention the second Boeing, which has to join the flight in case something happens to the first one, so you can see how the numbers quickly add up. Thankfully, the odds of something happening to that plane are slim to none. Why? Because it's jam-packed with some of the most advanced avionics and defense systems imaginable. The plane can thwart enemy radars, and eject white-hot flares to distract any incoming heat-seeking missiles. If the missiles are infrared-seeking instead, then using IRCM jammers, essentially a special infrared light, those two can be jammed and deflected. Not only can Air Force One divert any surface-to-air missile and repel bullets thanks to armored windows, but with its specially coated shell, it can also, ready for this, 
withstand the effects of nuclear bombs wreaking havoc on the ground below. So if everything's hitting the fan on land, the president can confidently take refuge in the sky. If an emergency situation does suddenly arise, or more simply, if the president just wants to jet off to Hawaii for a vacation, far more planning and logistics go on behind the scenes than most realize. Expert Air Force crews at the Maryland Andrews Air Force Base carefully inspect the plane before any flight. Once the all-clear is given, the Marine One helicopter transports the President from the White House to the Air Force Base, all the while troops are keeping a keen eye out for any unauthorized aircraft or threats. And yes, they're authorized to shoot on sight. Just before the presidential Boeing takes off, a number of cargo planes depart, carrying the President's bulletproof weapon-loaded motorcade. By doing so, the Air Force ensures that the President's ground transportation will be ready and available upon his arrival. Is 200 grand per hour too expensive to keep this bird up in the air? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and have a great day. Catch you next time.